The grayscale Bitcoin Trust has been the center of attention for many recently, and given their rampant BTC offloading, many are wondering if they're to blame for the Bitcoin market bearishness. Today we're going to be looking at whether GBTC is responsible for Bitcoin market crashes and where better to start than the long and short term holders chart on looking to Bitcoin. So what we can see here is the amount of circulating supply of BTC that is being held by long term holders or those market participants that have held BTC for an extended period of time or short term holders. And we can usually see when, well, obviously, when money is moving from long term holders to short term holders, these are inversely correlated. So really what we want to see is lots of long term holders holding their BTC, not wanting to sell, understanding the opportunity cost of taking profit on their Bitcoin positions. And really, once these actually peak or when the short term holders peak, it usually indicates a Bitcoin market cycle top as retail flood in and typically by the market cycle peak. And if we come down here, we can see that long term holders are defined by those that have been holding BTC for a period of 155 days or more. And what we can see since the Bitcoin ETFs were approved, it's been a big talking point that GBTC, the grayscale Bitcoin trust, has been dumping their Bitcoin holdings as investors potentially move capital to other ETFs or potentially sell due to the fact that the ETF was maybe a buy the rumor, sell the news event. And what we can see if we zoom in onto the Bitcoin price action here, if we look to January the 11th, the date of the BTC ETF approvals, which is when the GBTC selling really started, there were 16 million, 15,967 long term holder supply of BTC. So a huge amount of the circulating supply of around 19 and a half million BTC at that moment in time were held by those who had been holding BTC for a long period of time. However, since then, we have seen this decline to around 14.7 million, slightly less, slightly more, around 14.7 million BTC. So we have seen around 1.3, 1.4 million BTC move hands from long term holders to the short term holders offloading their capital, potentially locking in profits. And many have associated the potential dips we've seen in the Bitcoin price action since the ETF approval with this rampant GBTC selling. So if we just go and get the actual figure on circulating supply here from the live price page we have on lookintobitcoin.com, we can actually figure out in percentage terms the impact of the GBT selling on the market to really confirm whether we need to blame GBTC, the grayscale Bitcoin trust, for dumping their coins, crashing the market, or if maybe this has all been a little bit overblown. So if we go to the Grayscale page here, we can actually see the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust ETF, which has now, of course, lost a lot of their BTC holdings, given the BlackRock ETF approvals, the Fidelity approvals, etc. So if we actually go to this page here, which is by CoinGlass, other on-chain analytic platforms are available, we can see they have a pretty nice chart of the GBTC holdings in Bitcoin terms. So on January 11th, they held 619,000 Bitcoin. And we can see post that date, there was a rampant offloading of BTC from the GBTC fund to where it is today to beneath 300,000. So over half of their holdings have been dumped on the market as the Bitcoin price action has moved from January the 11th. However, if we go back to this page here, the long and short term holders page, we can see that as they have sold 324,000 BTC, which many are associating with crashing the Bitcoin market, this is 1.64% of the circulating supply of BTC, a tiny amount. And if we go to the long term holders specific amount of BTC, which at that time was, like we said, around 16 million BTC held by long term holders, that selling only accounts for 2% of the long term holder supply. 324,000 of this is a pretty minimal amount, really. However, we do have to acknowledge that of this long term holder supply decreasing, so from 16 or so million to beneath 15, about 14.7 million, this selling has been about 25% from GBTC, which many are saying is a huge amount 324,000 Bitcoin flooding the open market, dumping the Bitcoin price action. Since January the 11th, we've run up from 40,000 Bitcoin to a new all time high above 70,000 Bitcoin. And if we look at when the most rampant selling of this was, it was pretty much as soon as the ETF was approved. We saw this dump pretty massively while the Bitcoin price action was going sideways. So maybe there was a little bit of suppression at that point. But as it has continued to decline, the Bitcoin price action rallied to above a new all time high before a Bitcoin halving, before we've 
seen any indication of a huge flood of retail coming into the market. And if we look at something like here on blockchain.com, we can actually see the amount of Bitcoin volume every single day. And this sits at 44,446,894,976 dollars worth. So if we then convert this value in dollars into Bitcoin at the current price, given this is a one day of trading volume, that equates to 769,000 BTC, or well over double the amount that Grayscale have offloaded since January the 11th, months ago now. So in one day, we trade way more than twice that of all that offloaded BTC. So really, I think a lot of people have maybe overblown the impact of this GBTC dumping. Of course, it has probably, to some extent, suppressed Bitcoin's price appreciation because anytime anyone's dumping hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin on the market, it's likely to require a lot of capital to prop up the market to at least stay at equilibrium. However, like we said, given the fact that Bitcoin over that same period of time has increased exponentially to a new all-time high before a halving event, something we'd never seen before, kind of, at least in my opinion, negates the impact that this has been having. You also need to consider that a huge amount of this GBT selling may have just been selling by their users to convert into other Bitcoin ETFs. Therefore, there's no actual selling necessarily on the market because ETFs like the BlackRock ETF is a spot Bitcoin ETF. So if you're selling GBTC, to buy iBit, this isn't having a negative impact on the market. You're just selling and buying back with a different provider. So I really think this has been massively overblown. And unless we see over the next few weeks and months, as those GBTC holdings potentially continue to decrease towards zero like they will, and we see a huge negative impact on the Bitcoin market, then maybe we could have some association with GBTC's brash and bearishness on the market. But really, like we said, we're talking about a couple of percent here over the course of months. This is very normal for Bitcoin to have a big run up and see long term holders start taking some profit on their positions. We see it in every single cycle. And I think it might be somewhat naive to associate all of this potential bearishness just with one provider. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all of the content we discussed today, as well as the many more resources that are all available on lookintobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. So just to summarize, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has been given a lot of attention over the last few months due to the amount of BTC it has offloaded from its holdings, with many investors believing this selling has been to blame for all the market pullbacks we've seen. However, this narrative has almost certainly been massively overblown, with GBTC holdings only accounting for a small percentage of the circulating BTC supply, while also taking into account that Bitcoin has rallied to new all-time highs as the most aggressive selling was taking place. And we also need to consider that a lot of this selling was probably just people converting their GBTC holdings into new ETF holdings through BlackRock or any of the other new ETF providers, so really, I think this narrative has probably been massively overblown. And unless we see some substantial evidence changing this over the next few weeks, I think really a lot of this news we see, a lot of this big fundamental events of GBT selling can probably be, to some extent, ignored. If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to gain access to professional resolution charts, advanced macro and portfolio data tools, in-depth crypto industry reports, live and personalized indicator alerts, private trainer music scripts and more of a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are and GBTC offloading their Bitcoin holdings. Do you actually think that it has been very responsible for some of the Bitcoin crashes we've seen? Or do you maybe think like I think like a lot of the data points towards that maybe this has been a little bit overblown and it's just typical market dynamics that we see in any and every bull cycle. But realistically, Bitcoin as it grows and matures as an asset class is always going to have this cyclical price action nature. But as I said, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.